I thought I would just do a quick demonstration on the active setup because I've been getting a bunch of questions from people about how it works. We use the active setup for ventilation and because it's not the typical way that a lot of patients do it, it's not familiar to most pulmonologists, respiratory therapists, or DME companies. So a lot of times they don't even know where to begin in helping a patient implement this that is interested in it. Um, most people, when they find that they need ventilation to help support their breathing due to weak breathing muscles, are put on a ventilator and given the active, I mean the passive circuit. The passive circuit looks just like this. It's just a single tube. The active circuit looks different. It looks like this tube right here. It has two additional tubes um, along with the circuit and an exhalation valve built right in to the circuit, which is the primary difference between the passive and the active circuit. Um, the main reason why somebody would want to use an active circuit is with the Trilogy 100, you can't use an EPAP any lower than four with the passive circuit. So in order to have less of that pressure blowing at you while you're trying to exhale, you have to switch over to the active setup. Um, and you will first of all need to talk to your pulmonologist and get that person to order this setup before you can do anything else. The next step would be to find a DME company that's willing to support you in this and provide the supplies for you. But once you get to that point, a couple of things would have to change. So this is the Trilogy 100. And one thing that would have to change is the panel would have to be switched out to the active panel. You can see that this panel has two ports on here, which is different from how yours would look if you are using the passive circuit. Um, and those are where these two tubes connect. One is slightly wider than the other. So you can see exactly how they go on. It's a little cumbersome with the case on it. So it goes like that. And because we use the humidifier, I'm going to go to that step next. So here's the typical filter. It goes on this port coming out of the ventilator, which delivers the air. The air goes into the water canister to pick up the heat and moisture, and then it comes out the active circuit. Exhalation valve is here, and we need to have a connector in order for this swivel connector to work on it. This swivel connector works with the mask that my daughter prefers, which is this Air Touch um, by ResMed. It has a nice foam um, feel to it that, that goes against the skin, which is really comfortable. And um, this is important to be aware of because with the active circuit, you don't want to have um, exhalation valves and ports built into the mask because that's handled right here. Because this one does have exhalation ports in it, I use HY tape, which is right here. That's this beige colored tape to occlude some of the ports. That way we don't get leaking, extra leaking and alarms from the vent. Um, there's also some exhalation around here and I'll just occlude whatever we need to to make it comfortable and supportive uh, and still not trigger any alarms on the vent. Um, so this is what you would have to do if you want to use a lower EPAP. The lower EPAP again is preferable to some people who have weak breathing muscles because it's difficult to breathe out against a pressure and you will notice a difference between an EPAP of four and an EPAP of three, two, one, or zero. You can do an EPAP of zero on here, which means that there would be 
absolutely no resistance at all as you're doing that exhale. Um, I just wanted to mention some of the uh, supplies. So the active circuit is offered by different companies. There's um, Philips Respironics and this intersurgical company. We have uh, gotten both in the past. And this is just an example of um, this tube that we use over here, which goes between the vent and the water canister. Um, this tube right here, this connecting tube, comes in a huge roll. Um, I think we have 100 feet of it. It's very long, and it has these places in between each of the corrugated sections where you just cut it with a scissor. And that gives you a six inch section, which works really well to hook your things up together like this. Um, a couple other side things that I just wanted to mention as tips. We use a notebook at the bedside to chart just any events that take place, how well the current settings are working for ventilation, um, any kind of symptoms, uh, odd things that might happen, a restless night's sleep, any of that is documented here, as well as any changes that are made to the vent settings. So we can really keep track of what's happening and what changes might need to be made to correct it. And then another thing that we do, or I should say my daughter does, is uh, she sleeps a little bit of a distance away from the vent. And in order for her to be able to turn it off and on from where she lays comfortably, I found this. It's a candy cane, but it has the right stiffness and shape that it works perfectly for her to use it to reach the button. And she can do whatever she needs to from afar. So that's kind of cool. If you have any other questions, you can contact me. Just um, let me know and if I can answer them, I would be happy to. Um, but one other thing that I just wanna mention again is this is not the mask that is typically provided with the active circuit. Like I was saying, the mask is one that needs to be unvented or minimally vented so that you don't have alarms going off on the machine. Um, just because the exhalation is provided there. So you would have to make sure that your DME company was aware, aware of that if you did not light the unvented mask, which is provided by them. It's just a regular silicone type of mask, and my daughter just didn't find it comfortable. So I hope that helps.